Welcome to the Ben Wood Johnson Podcast. You can visit Dr. Johnson's blog at benwoodpost.com. Dr. Johnson's works can be found at drbenwoodjohnson.com. You can also support Dr. Johnson on Patreon, the link to which is in the description. Hey, welcome to the Ben with Johnson podcast. Uh, today is July the 2nd, 2018, and this is a new beginning. Today we're going to be talking about uh, uh, Lucinda Spooner and the concept of justice and peace. Uh, in this particular segment, I sort of talk about how uh, the, the notion of justice and peace is somewhat erroneous. What we understand as justice, uh, what we understand as war and peace uh, is somewhat uh, uh, construed in a way that does not reflect the reality of man uh, in their world and, and 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 I talk about the way it is a fruitless pursuit there, there could never be peace there could never be justice in the world of man because man has a natural tendency to fight uh, and it is because the nature itself na- the natural milieu, the natural environment itself incites that uh, desire to survive, that desire to, to fight, that desire to find the means to be. And usually finding the means to be requires the being to uh, enter into a war with another entity. Uh, and, 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 and the being cannot uh, withstand himself from uh, fighting, uh, from surviving. And because of that, uh, peace is something that is, if it exists to some extent, is ephemeris. It is not uh, gonna last. It is not going to last because the natural proclivities of men to survive will always take precedent on his uh, understanding of, of of the need for peace and in, 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 in the environment where where the being evolves. This is a short podcast, and without further ado, let's get to it. Lucinda Spooner notes, men shall do everything to avoid war. And he lists certain conditions which he says are important for justice or the science of justice to prevail. And when these conditions are violated, men are at war. Now, I disagree with the presumption that men can be in peace. And the reason is simple. One could argue that peace is not of the nature of man. And basically, there is nothing in nature that is peaceful and that is within our understanding of peace. Now, if we were to explain peace within, within the context of nature, Peace would be the absence of anything in nature. So the presence of anything in nature, in and of itself, is a war. Because there's a constant battle for subsistence. There's a constant battle for survival. Uh, And every entity within nature is at war with each other to survive. But the game of nature is the game of survival. Every living entity has to survive Uh, from the granite that is on the floor from the gas that is in the air all the way to the giant mammoth that is roaming through the planet this is true for the giant tree that is standing as a beacon on this earth there is a war and the war that is going on is a war that is intrinsic it is by this war that nature exists. It is by this fight, this infinite fight for survival, that the cycle of life continues to be. The concept of peace, or the notion that men can be at peace, it's a convenient concept. It does not take into account the reality of men in nature, right? 
So that's why when we're talking about a war in nature, we have to understand that it is it is not the construct. It is not based on the way we understand it. So we have to understand that nature is not hierarchical. Okay, Nature is linear. What that means is that anything in nature can survive or could win a war against anything else. So in that sense, we have to understand that there are certain things in nature that are always going to be fighting for survival. So in other words, we cannot speak of peace within the context of nature, right? So there's always something that trumps something in nature. So this is the nature of the natural. And that's why nature itself is this chaos. It's this always this back and forth between entities that are fighting, constantly fighting at each other to survive. So when, when, when Spooner says men can be at peace, uh, is somewhat mis- misguided because so the statement does not take into account the reality of men in nature. So even though men live or men evolve within a structural, within a, a contained environment, which is society, that does not necessarily take the nature of men away from his nature. In other words, man is still man. And by virtue of being man, man has certain inherent uh, proclivities, and one of which is to survive, right? So that, in, that entails this natural proclivity, this natural tendency of the man to survive is going to induce him to behave in a way that could be construed as a war, okay? So when Spooner says that men can be at peace, he, it, it, this understanding sort of uh, uh, ignores the reality of men in terms of man's nature, right? Now that does not mean that men could not endeavor within the confound of, of their understanding of, of their life within this, this social environment, that doesn't mean that men could not endeavor to withstand, to abstain themselves from behaving according to their nature. And this is precisely the concept, the notion, the underlining uh, premise of civilization. It's this idea that the man uh, chooses not to be as his nature intended him to be. Okay, But that does not make the man something other than what his or what his nature intended him to be so a man is still a man but but spooner sort of uh, um talks about justice in there as if it were inherent like the man was um the man had a certain inherency in terms of the man is likely to uh to go uh, the man is likely to behave in a way that that is just So we have to understand that the man is not inherently just. Man learns to be just within the confound of the understanding of what justice is uh, in a social environment. Okay, If we were to look at the man in nature, that man would not behave in a way that would... Uh, you know, reflect a certain understanding of an ideal of what justice, what peace, what what, what equality is to be. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that uh, the natural man is inclined to be unjust um, according to other men's understanding of what justice is. Uh, The natural man is inclined to be unfair, uh, is inclined to be violent, is inclined to respond to his nature, to his intrinsic uh, need to be, to his intrinsic need to survive. Okay, but what sets one man apart from another in terms of nature in society is this understanding that the man in nature is a man that is contained, is is a man that is under a certain scrutiny, which prevents him from uh, being a man as his nature. And this is the reason we, despite the fact that uh, you know, nat- there are certain rules of conduct, there are certain um, you know mechanisms that are designed to. Uh, control men to prevent men from behaving as a wild beast but that does not stop the man to behave like a wild beast so within that confine we have to understand that when we speak of justice when we speak of peace when we speak of war we have to understand that these are natural concepts that are understood from a societal understanding and by that i mean uh, when we speak of war war it's a natural phenomenon 
uh, and when I speak of war in this case, I'm not referring to one party uh, going at another party. In other words, it's, well, I'm not I'm not referring to one man um, going at it with another man. Uh, I am not referring to one family going at it with another family. Uh, I'm not talking about one nation uh, going at it with another nation. I am talking about the natural state of things, uh, the natural state of being of life itself. And in order for things to be, in order for entities to be within the natural, there ought to be a war. And that war is this idea that I as an entity can only be when that entity cannot be. And in order for me to be in lieu of an, another entity to be, I have to win the war of survival. And within that context, the whole concept of survival itself is a war. So uh, when, when we speak of justice, it is somewhat uh, this understanding that the, the man or the entity is inherently just. Nonetheless, the, the entity does not have any concept of justice within the confound of his natural proclivities to survive, right? So an entity would not refrain himself from surviving on the basis that that particular means of survival would be unjust, okay? It is against that entity's nature. It is against of that being's nature. So in that sense, we could not speak of survival within the confound of, of, of something being just or not. So I believe, I, I think that Spooner sort of misses the mark there because this, this, this idea is sort of uh, uh, the foundation of, of society as we know it today. It's this understanding that men are a certain way and based on the way men are, society design rules and uh, regulations and if that uh, laws that are uh, supposed to uh, contain the being within the way the being is supposed to be. And I think this is erroneous and I believe that the concept of peace is it's, it's an elusive concept. It's a construct. It's an ideal which will never be um, become true. It's, it's, it's a pursuit. It's a fruitless pursuit. Uh, there will never be peace, at least within the confine of peace. But uh, that being said, I understand that we could have an understanding of a peaceful environment where certain men could agree to uh, could agree to to control, to withstand, could agree to withstand their nature, could agree to control their their being, their, their proclivities to be, in order to further a peaceful environment for other men. And in that sense, yes, uh, the justice is not going to be something inherent, rather it would be something that is positive. The understanding of justice would be positive. It would be based on the laws of man, or a person's understanding of what, what is just and what is not. So we have to take that into account when we're when we when we're talking about justice when we're talking about